October 2008, a mysterious person named Satoshi Nakamoto released a document that changed the world forever. This document, known as the Bitcoin White Paper, introduced Bitcoin, a new kind of digital money. It promised a new way to handle money without relying on banks. Satoshi Nakamoto himself is believed to hold 1 million Bitcoins, which accounts for approximately 5% of all Bitcoins in circulation. This would make him the 23rd wealthiest person according to Forbes. However, on April 23rd, 2011, Satoshi wrote his last message. I've moved on to other things. It's in good hands with Kevin and everyone. After that, he disappeared and no one has heard from him since. Additionally, none of these Bitcoins have ever been moved. So the question is, who actually is Satoshi Nakamoto? Although many people think so, Bitcoin wasn't the first attempt at creating digital money. In 1998, a cypherpunk Wei Dai proposed B Money a decentralized electronic cash system. Around the same time, IT specialist Nick Sabo introduced another project, BitGold. And in 1996, another technology called eGold was created. eGold was very similar to Bitcoin, but with one key difference. Unlike Bitcoin, eGold was backed by real gold that was stored in a vault in Melbourne, Florida. When eGold was at its peak, the company stored its gold also in banks in London and Dubai. However, all these projects had one big problem, centralization. Storage facilities can always be robbed, assets can be sized, and the creators themselves can be targeted. If someone took all the gold from walls, the project would become unusable with almost no value. People later understood that if you want to create a digital currency, it cannot be backed by anything. Later, all these projects were banned because they were used for money laundering. All the gold was sold out to people and developers were fined for trying to make their own money. Here, Satoshi Nakamoto took inspiration that if he wants to create digital money, he must remain anonymous. That is the only way to keep the project decentralized and protect yourself in case it succeeds. The name Satoshi Nakamoto suggests that he could be from China, but there is a little evidence to support this. Technically, the Bitcoin white paper was published in English and it wasn't translated for a long time. On forums, Satoshi communicated using fluent English, often incorporating American slang. By looking at the time of his messages, we can say they were primarily sent during a daytime hours in America. This suggests that Satoshi operated within an American time zone. It is widely believed that Satoshi was part of the cypherpunk movement, a group that advocated for the use of cryptography to achieve freedom. And where do you think this movement came from? Just from the United States. This leads to the conclusion that Satoshi Nakamoto was likely an American, or at least he lived in the United States. Our first candidate for the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto is Nick Sabo, an American IT specialist and cryptography expert. Many clues point right to Sabo as the possible creator of Bitcoin. It may be due to Sabo's last project, BitGold, which we mentioned earlier in this video. BitGold was also designed as a decentralized system and utilized the proof-of-work algorithm, the one that Bitcoin uses. What's more, Bitcoin white paper also references to BitGold further fueling speculation. Interestingly, Sabo was actively recruiting people for his BitGold project shortly before the Bitcoin white paper was published. But right after that, he abandoned BitGold and became involved in Bitcoin. Once he was asked about the size of blocks and the second layer of Bitcoin, his answer was, I would definitely go for a second layer. I mean, I designed Bitcoin, gold, with two layers. Coincidence? Slip of his tongue has left many wondering. Was it just a simple mistake or did he accidentally reveal something more? Additionally, Sabo frequently used pseudonyms and is also considered one of the best cryptographers in the world. Despite these compelling connections, Sabo consistently denies being Satoshi Nakamoto. Among the most likely candidates for the creation of Bitcoin is Hal Finney, a talented programmer and the first person to ever receive a Bitcoin transaction. Finney was the first user to receive Bitcoin directly from Satoshi's wallet, leading to speculation that he may have created the character of Satoshi and sent the transaction to himself. During his life, he worked on encryption technologies at PGP and identified himself also as a cypherpunk. His deep involvement in cryptography made him well suited to create a system like Bitcoin. Even if Finney wasn't Satoshi, he was undoubtedly in close contact with him. In 2013, Finney was diagnosed with ALS, a disease that left him dependent on assistance. My name is uh, Hal Finney, and uh, I'm making this recording for uh, a few reasons, mostly 
because I want people in the future to be able to hear my voice and uh, maybe something of my story. Um, I was diagnosed six months ago with ALS and uh, um, as a result, I will uh, be losing the ability to speak. Despite this, he continued to work on Bitcoin and remained active in the community. Eventually, in 2014, Pini opted for a cryogenic preservation, hoping that one day he would be revived and be able to continue his work. By that time, his vision and work have left a lasting impact on the cryptocurrency world. I bet you have seen this guy. His name is Dorian Nakamoto and he became a suspect primarily because of his name. Interestingly, his birth name is Satoshi, leading some to believe that we found the creator of Bitcoin. However, the name is where the evidence stops. Dorian was also shocked and surprised when journalists appeared at his home after an article suggested he might be the creator of Bitcoin. He stated that he had nothing to do with the project and was distressed by the media surrounding him. Despite his denials, Dorian Nakamoto has become a celebrity in the Bitcoin community. He attends various Bitcoin events where many people take photos with him. However, what is really interesting, Dorian lives just a few blocks away from Hal Finney in Temple City, Los Angeles. Could Hal have been just inspired by something on his way home? How could he have known that Dorian's birth name was Satoshi? Was it a coincidence or did he know Dorian personally? This raises many questions. It's possible that Hal Finney noticed the name Nakamoto and found it fitting for the pseudonym he chose. However, there's no solid evidence to suggest a direct connection between Dorian and the creation of Bitcoin. And here is also something to think about. If you wanted to stay hidden and deny being part of Bitcoin, why use your real name? Or was it a trick? Did he think that using his real name would make people not suspect him? Dorian Nakamoto continues to live a quiet life, despite the fame upon him. While his name brought him unexpected attention, the true identity of Bitcoin's creator remains one of the greatest mysteries in the world of digital currency. A guy named Paul Leroux is also a mysterious candidate to Bitcoin's invention. He started as a skilled coder, but his life took a dark turn as he became a criminal mastermind. He was involved in various illegal activities, including an extensive online pharmacy network. This network generated millions of dollars in profit, all through the sale of illegal prescription painkillers. With his technical skills, Leroux had the capability to create Bitcoin. And for someone running a massive illegal operation, Bitcoin would be an ideal tool to launder money and avoid detection. Leroux was later arrested for his criminal activities. This could very well explain why Satoshi's Bitcoin have never been moved. After his arrest, Leroux expressed interest in Bitcoin mining technology, planning to start a business in this field once released. In 2016, Craig Wright announced on his blog that he was the person behind the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. However, the Bitcoin community was skeptical, as there was little evidence to support his claim. Are you Satoshi? Yes. Okay. So you wrote the Satoshi white paper? Yes. They have no idea that you can't uh, basically be a public figure in Britain and run from the government. Right. You're only a public figure because you cosplay as Satoshi. <laughs> Bright was challenged by the community to prove his identity by using the private key of a wallet that belongs to Satoshi. He refused to do so, providing other, inaccurate evidence instead. This led to his rejection by much of the Bitcoin community. He still remains a controversial figure at many Bitcoin events. Wright, along with Roger Ware, created a fork of Bitcoin known as Bitcoin Cash. If you don't know what the fork is, it is basically a new version of Bitcoin with modified properties. However, disagreements with Ware led Wright to initiate another fork, resulting in Bitcoin SV, or as he says, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision. Wright has also faced serious allegations, including accusation of stealing cryptocurrencies worth several billion dollars from his deceased colleague David Clayman. In the context of Bitcoin, various names have been linked to the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto, including David Clayman or even Elon Musk. However, concrete evidence supporting these claims is absent. Some speculate that Hal Finney and Nick Sabo may have collaborated on Bitcoin's creation, which is somewhat likely. But the theory I like the most is that Satoshi Nakamoto came from the future to create Bitcoin to save us before a global crisis. It sounds very compelling. Of course, this is not a financial advice. 
However, the true identity of Satoshi Nakamoto should perhaps remain undiscovered. Whoever he is, he surely had reasons to remain anonymous. Anyway, Bitcoin operates most effectively as a decentralized network without a central authority. Even if its creator no longer has power over it, they could still influence it through their beliefs or Bitcoin holdings.